right, well, we are here at the ISDC conference in Washington, D.C. with uh, Dave Fisher. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you, Michael. So tell me, how did you first get started in space? When did you first become interested? Oh, I grew up as a kid. You know, I was born in 44, so right after the war, uh, you were watching on television, you know, you had three channels. And Walter Cronkite was doing his uh, victory through air power. And I got uh, the bug for building plastic airplanes and other kits and things like that. So I grew up looking at uh, airplanes. And when the space race got started in the late 50s, I was living in New York. And they launched Sputnik. And shortly after that, we had the uh, interesting episode of the Vanguard program. And that particular explosion, I still see it, even today. And then, of course, uh, the Redstone program with uh, the Mercury capsules and the short flights, and then, of course, the John Glenn flight. And at that point, you know, I was hooked. Uh, I've always been in the science world. My uh, formal training's in chemistry, and uh, always been in the science world. At one point, did you uh, join up with the National Space Society? Were you part of either the L5 or National Space Institute before the merger? No, I was. Uh, I came in perhaps ten years ago. I joined uh, both the National Space Society and the Planetary Society. I decided that. I would, you know, throw in a little bit more money than just the annual membership required to get the magazines because this is something that I thought really needed to be supported. And so uh, I've been active uh, in both societies for the last 10 years or so now. Now, um, you started off with that, uh, uh, the Phoenix chapter. Right. And at what point did you start taking over to do, to do the block? Um, in 2009, in the summer, uh, Veronica, who was the chapter president, and was for 10 years, uh, she really started the chapter back in the year 2000, although I didn't learn about it until 2008 or so. So I was there for about a year, and she became aware of the fact that I knew some things about computers and websites and stuff like that. So she asked me if I wanted to uh, contribute to the NSS Phoenix uh, WordPress blog. And I said, sure. So I got started in that and looking for you know, rocket stories and satellite stories and stories about uh, you know, spacecraft exploring other planets you know, especially the Mars stuff, very interesting there. And then in the middle of the summer, I decided I would go off to the Augustine Commission in Florida for that meeting. I'd been following the, the committee meetings and writing synopsis of the commission meetings up to that point. And so I went to Florida in July and met a whole bunch of people, particularly uh, fond of Wayne Hale and uh, you know his his recollections of uh, his time at NASA. But the Augustine Commission meeting itself provided me a huge amount of material. I wrote eventually probably 30 blog entries uh, over the course of the next uh, four or five months based on my experience in, in uh, Florida. And then um, about a, a year and a half ago, um, you got approached by um, the, the national um, the NSS to, right. to start running, uh, contributing towards their blog as well. Yep. How, uh, how did that get started? Um, I think Jim Plaxco, uh, who's on the Web Oversight Committee at the National Space Society, sent me an email. Veronica was uh, sort of agitating in the background and said, hey, you know, this guy is producing reasonable stuff and you ought to talk to him. He might be willing to contribute to the national blog. 
and between Jim Plaxco and David Brand Erickson, they convinced me that, you know, yeah, I should be, you know, part of the team writing material. And it, it's turned out very well. Um, David Brand Erickson's emphasis is on the policy side of things. So he'll post uh, information out of the statements that come from the National Space Society. He'll post articles on policy decisions, things going on in Congress and stuff like that. I'll be posting, on the other hand, uh, technology side of things. Uh, I cover the, the episodes associated with uh, SpaceX and Orbital, and I do a lot of um, blog entries on spacecraft exploration. I particularly like the uh, opportunity and spirit stories and the science involved in that. And I've written a fair number of articles both for the local Phoenix chapter and for the national blog uh, associated with the opportunity and, and spirit explorations. Um, concerning uh, the Mars missions, um, how do you feel about uh, Curiosity and uh, its sky crane delivery system? Well, it's obviously new technology and you have one shot to get it right. Now we've seen today what happens when you have very careful planning and lots of testing and lots of, well, let's wait a minute and not rush into this with the absolutely lovely birthing of the Dragon at the International Space Station. So one would hope that the folks at JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, who have had a string of successes, that their efforts at testing and all the rest of it will pay off. Of course, the proof is in the pudding coming August 5th uh, when it runs through its uh, entry, descent, and landing exercise, and we shall see. Tell me some of your thoughts on uh, the other planetary missions that will be arriving in the next uh, couple of years, such as uh, New Horizons. New Horizons obviously will go screaming by Pluto and have just a very short period of time to make a set of observations. But they're, uh, they seem to be in excellent shape uh, for that. That's going to be interesting. And then, of course, that particular uh, spacecraft is off toward the Kuiper Belt and looking for objects that are perhaps as large as Pluto, perhaps larger. It will be interesting now that we've got one Kuiper Belt object under our, our belt, so to speak, that indeed is larger than Pluto. So we have these dwarf planets. You've got Ceres in the asteroid belt that's classified now as a dwarf planet. So the exploration of those objects out in deep space toward the Kuiper Belt, looking for dwarf planets. The uh, New Horizon program is going to be very interesting. I think another program that's going to be exciting is the Juno program. And as you know, it's a very short-lived program. It's going to make 33 orbits around Jupiter running through its radiation belts and basically committing suicide in the radiation storms as it explores the gravitational fields and the electromagnetic fields and the radiation fields of that planet, trying to get some idea of what the internal structure looks like and how was it formed uh, in the uh, early solar system.